mass spectroscopy of elements is part of an atomic structure and property unit in chemistry. Mass spectroscopy is used to determine the quantity of isotopes, the abundance of those isotopes. You could also use it to determine an unknown element. The other thing that you can do is you can use those abundances and the masses of those isotopes and calculate the atomic mass of the element that's on the periodic table. So we have to know some uh, basic terms first. First is you have to know that atomic number is the number of protons, that mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. The mass number, if you take it subtracted from the atomic number, you get the number of neutrons. Then you also have to know the ways to find the number of electrons. For a neutral atom, it's just the same as the protons. But if you have an anion, the number of electrons goes up, which you add that kind of into the value of the negative charge. You still have the same number of protons, you just gain electrons. Cations, you do just the opposite and subtract that numerical value. And again, you don't gain or lose protons, you gain or lose electrons. Isotopes are the same atoms, same number of protons. There's just a different number of neutrons, making it heavier or lighter. And then the last is the atomic mass unit, which is the mass of that atom. All right, next, when you have these symbols, the big thing is to look on the periodic table, you'll find that it has the atomic number symbol and the atomic mass unit. The mass number has to be given to you in this isotopic symbol. On the periodic table, there isn't a mass number listed. The atomic mass is the weighted average of all the isotopes and their abundance. Um, so when you see these symbols, you have to have the mass number listed to find the neutrons okay, for that isotope. All right, next, um, this would be a table that you should be able to fill in pretty quickly. Um, remember what I said about the fact that if it's neutral, the protons and electrons are the same. 51 is added to 40 to give us the mass number of 91, one of the isotopes of zirconium. If you have an ion, remember if it's positive, the electron count goes down. And if it's negative, the electron count goes up by that number that's in the uh, superscript right here, okay? Remember, protons do not change and um, only electrons change for your ions. All right, next. When you have an isotope, um, a lot of times they'll list it out. They, they'll show you the proton count, the neutron count. They'll show you that the proton stays the same, the neutron count goes up which means your tritium is your heaviest isotope of hydrogen. It's also negligible in terms of abundance. Um, the deuterium is a small amount. So when you look on the periodic table, the weighted average of all of this ends up being about 1.008, just a little bit above one. And that's because most of it is uh, protium or hydrogen, the ordinary hydrogen with one proton, one electron and no neutrons. So what I'm going to show you is how do you actually calculate it if you have something that isn't like hydrogen where it's predominantly one type of isotope. So let's go over um, what a mass spec does first and then we'll go over how they use that data to calculate the weighted average. It's known as a device that can find the relative abundance in the mass like I had said. This is just one from Thermo Fisher. You don't have to know how a mass spectrometer works unless you'd want to. I have it at the end of the video. But they put it in the sample, it heats it, and it separates into the different isotopes. Um, down here at the bottom, for, for basic chemistry, we don't have to worry about the unit down here being mass divided by charge. They'll probably just list it as atomic mass. So they're showing you that zirconium has one, two, three, four, five different isotopes. And the most abundant is the zirconium-90. It's about 50% abundant. And then those other ones have different abundancies down to a really small amount for the last one. So what you can do is you can take a, a data set like this, this graph, and you can use it to find the atomic mass of zirconium. So how would you calculate that? So let's go do that next. So finding that atomic mass, you'd have to have all of those percentages listed, not just kind of guessed like I did. And then you might want to list those all on a table with the mass listed with the percent of that um, abundant um, type of that element in terms of this is zirconium. So zirconium has 51% abundant of this isotope and then a really small amount of this last isotope down at the bottom here. So to calculate the atomic mass for this, you have to take and calculate the weighted average by taking this um, mass multiplied by the decimal of the isotope, so 0.515, and then you just add that all together. So it looks like this, and then this value is what should be on the periodic table, 
And it's that's what it's saying is it's 91.2 times heavier than hydrogen. All right. So that's how you calculate it. So here's a summary of that uh, formula using the summation sign. So you can get the atomic mass by just summing up all the isotopes' masses times their abundance divided by 100. And then all of those abundances should add up to 100. But sometimes they'll just have two isotopes. So this is pretty common. So what if you have two isotopes you and you know the atomic mass, kind of like a math problem. Could you go backwards and find the percentages knowing those pieces of data? And you can. The first thing you have to do is you have to find the percent, um, you can find those percent, sorry, you can find those percent abundances. You would just say that you one of them is x and then the other one is 1 minus x. So let's say one was 80%, 20%, you'd actually say x might be 0.8 and then 1 minus x would be 0.2. So that still adds up to being 80% but as decimals in 0.8 and 0.2. Next, this is the formula you'd use. You'd take that mass of that first isotope times x, mass of the second isotope times 1 minus. Remember these are in the decimal. And then to go backwards and get it into a percent, once you solve for x, you'd multiply it by 100 and go the other direction. And then the last one would be just subtracting from 100 to find your other isotope. All right, so that's one way that you can do these problems with um, these mass spectrographs. I think that's what you'd probably call it. So what else could you do? Um, you could just have the, the graphs or you can have the spectrums and then you have to figure out maybe what's the most likely element. So what you'd need to do is look on the periodic table and say, um, we're going to assume that the mass divided by the charge, we're going to say the charge is 1, make it easy, and then so then the mass divided by the charge will just be the atomic mass. So what we're going to do then is say, okay, we're looking for an element that's got an atomic mass a little bit bigger than 10, and that would be boron. Next is, this would be magnesium, so if you look up magnesium, it's got 24.305, so it's got a little bit higher than 24, and again, um, the formula that's on the bottom here, mass divided by um, charge, we basically assume that we're going to have the charge of being 1, so then this m divided by z can just be the atomic mass for most of these spectrums. Okay. Next, last thing you could do is you could watch two other videos if you'd like, um, and that kind of concludes my quick little synopsis of what is mass spectroscopy in chemistry. So good luck, chemists!